Dear listener, wherever you are, whatever you may be doing, I humbly ask you to stop and look around at the people you are surrounded by. Are you with family, friends, workmates, strangers? If your answer is yes to any of those, you should consider yourself fortunate. My Christmas will not be so bright. There aren't any children I am hurrying home to, or even friends I need to call and wish a happy holiday. These connections are long gone for me. All that remains are the memories of a life I tossed away in the pursuit of knowledge. Where did it get me? Surprising, or perhaps not so much so, depending on your worldview. Not very far. Old Man Aster. I've seen pictures of abandoned places before, but it felt entirely different driving over the countryside and stepping into what was literally a ghost town. I could feel the spirit's eyes on me as I drove in, looking for any signs of life. I had dozens of questions that needed to be answered, and all of them seemed to lead here to this lonesome lake town. I've gathered so many stories that connect to Harbor Bay. I'm beginning to think that maybe my own story is somehow linked to this place. Soon enough, I was in the town square, where Raya claimed that she had laid down flowers before moss-covered statues. The entire place was dilapidated, with roots growing out from the streets and vines covering every window and door. Not exactly the most welcome place to spend Christmas morning. And the statues were almost entirely broken apart, as though someone had come by and smashed them to bits. A drive down the road showed me what had happened. Bulldozers from the accounting firm were in the streets, rusted and pushing back debris. Clearly, Thornton's business had tried in vain to rekindle a spark of life here, but the forces from beyond had decided that they wanted to keep a hold of it. What made this place so special, I wondered, as I moved up to the richer districts. It occurred to me that Lisa Landry had likely once called this place her home before she married. Would I possibly meet her spectral husband again? Surprisingly, instead, I met an old man that looked like he was a part of the scenery. He resembled a hunter, a sportsman that was moving about the ruins in search of a kill. When he saw me, I suspected that he was sizing me up to decide if I was prey. You've come a long way, the old man said. His voice sounded colder than any winter I'd ever endured. I thought back to May Wester and her warning about this charming fellow. I knew immediately who this had to be. Old man Aster, I take it, I asked. In the flesh, so to speak. But I don't think you came here to meet me, he said, with a gleam in his eye mischievous and dangerous. I kept my distance and raised a firearm that I had brought with me. Truth be told, I'm not sure why. I knew that being dead it would do no good, but Aster still seemed shocked by my fears and violent spirit. It's Christmas! Is that really the way you want to spend the most blessed day of the year? Aster asked. I came for answers. I quit playing games, I ordered. Aster raised his hands defensively and grabbed his cane, pointing toward a slope where I saw the old cemetery. All of your needless searching will lead you there, boy, he told me. I turned to look at the old gravestones, feeling a sense of foreboding take hold. What was he leading me towards? My feet seemed to move of their own accord up the hill, desperate to understand. 
It was nearly midday when I got to the graveyard, alone and forgotten by everyone that ever cared for it. There weren't many headstones, but all of them told a story or two. Families slain by guardian angels that had once overlooked Harbor Bay. Husbands that were murdered by greedy wives for fame and fortune. Sons that were slaughtered by cold winter. There was an air of dread over every unfortunate soul that had come here. And then... Then I saw a tombstone that bore my own name, and I felt altogether taken aback with shock. At first I ignored the obvious and thought maybe this was a Christmas trick, like what Dickens had written about. A warning from beyond to fix my life, otherwise I would wind up here, forgotten by everyone I had ever cared for, or perhaps forgotten by the world entirely like all of the other ghosts that had haunted this place. Instead, reading the inscription there on the stone had enlightened me to a story of my own life. A story I had forgotten. My name was Henry Landry. I was the husband of a beautiful wife, Liza and the father of two amazing children, Simon and Raoul. The town of Harbor Bay had fallen on hard times. A dreadful businessman named Howard Dalen had purchased the entire town with the intention of modernizing it, but not long after went bankrupt and committed suicide. As a result, the poor fools in Harbor Bay sunk into poverty people turned on one another one particularly dangerous winter, neighbors slaughtering each other when they realized some of the townsfolk were actually hoarding food underneath Father Strom's church. My wife and I, we tried to find food and power as the winter got worse, but then we hit a strip of black ice, and I, I died instantly. My boys managed to crawl out, only to later get lost in the woods and die of starvation. Liza was the lucky one, having gotten EMTs to save her. Her entire life changed in a single instance. My life insurance paid for her mansion, her decadent lifestyle, and helped her to forget about me and the boys. It was this callous attitude that brought me back to this world to make her pay for what she had done. It occurred to me now that the ghost I had seen at her estate was simply my own reflection, trying to help me piece together the forgotten tapestry of my memories. All of this came crashing down as I turned to see old man Astor gazing at me thoughtfully. He didn't seem as dangerous or vile as before. His clothes were clad in white, like an angel might have. Then he smiled at me and said, It's time to rejoin your family in heaven, Henry. I looked down at the graves, still torn apart at how much of my life had been taken away. But knowing my purpose in this world was fulfilled, and the stories of those who I had connected with was now told. I agreed with him. I made but one request, which you know of now, listener. As a spirit, it would be impossible for me to create these memoirs and have them be told, so I made clear that the recordings be given to Sabrina Maywester. She was, after all, the psychic she claimed to be, having used her services in the past to expose charlatans like Dalen and my wife. If you are hearing this now, that means that she followed my own Christmas wish and relayed the information to others so that these ghost stories can live on. 
This is where my own tortured soul now rests. But that doesn't mean that the other spirits can be quieted. Which is why I remind you of my original request. Tell tales of those who have passed on. Otherwise, we may still haunt you forevermore. Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and it's the end of today's video or today's episode of the podcast, which means I want to tell you guys thank you so much for watching. And thank you for hitting like and subscribe and bell and I think it's still subscribe on podcasts. One day I'll look that up. If you guys are listening on your phone, like I think the statistics say like 90% of you are, then on your phone you can also listen on another place. It's an app called Chilling. The Chilling app allows you to listen to stories from me that you can't get here, as well as stories from a whole group of other narrators. A lot of them you've heard before, some of them you've even heard here, like Autumn Ivy. Plus, it allows you to control the background music and background ambiance, which I think is probably one of the coolest features on there. Check out Chilling on Android and iOS now. I want to give a very big thank you to everybody on Patreon, especially Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Stephanie Butler, Brian Arce, Bobby Carmen, Tristan Pelton, Chance Burnett, Diana Krause, Crazy Kid, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Ika Limchok, Dirt Diver 030, Robert Schonkwiller, USMC, Matt Bach, Jables Raz, Mask Note, Joshua Mullen, Dan Pham, Matthew McNeese, Ben Spates, Jeremy H, Raltazal, Ficamel, Nana, The Morgan, Nick Weaver, Melted Lake, Tali Sue, Sky Mara Ravenswood, William King, Reaper 61167, Darth Miver, Michael Ortiz, Satanic Aries, Isodo Hatred, Nessie, Ronnie Hansen, Parafa Panda, Bardo Hawk 764, Lambda M98, Harley, Billy Morrow, Sashi Sazaku, at Grizzly Olsen Pro, My Body Sounds Like Rice Krispies, Jay, Miss Xandra, Suji Campbell, Stricken, Azreen Fox, Fried Chicken 12, Freddy Krueger, Happy Birthday, Jason Willis, Infernal One, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Hades Nephew, Tater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Cryptic Nightmares, Kiri the Sloth, Tommy Green, Fester's Lampshade, Sky Harbor, Nico Kyle, Rafael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Polson, Trey Smiles, and Corey Kenshin. Like I said, I, I cannot thank you guys enough for being a part of this, and that goes to everybody down there in the description, and everybody who even can just support for one dollar. Thank you guys, thank you guys, thank you guys. I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season, and sweet dreams. <laughs>